friends, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Fort Worth Roots. This is a Fort Worth podcast based on our community's creators, and you can find us on all your favorite streaming services and on social media. Just look for Fort Worth Roots. We also have a YouTube channel. Most of these recordings have an associated video on YouTube. You can just go to YouTube and type in Fort Worth Roots. Should pull right up. But seriously, thank you for being here today. Every single time you stream even one episode of Fort Worth Roots, it shows up on our analytics and it really does help the show. So thank you for being here. And if this is your first time listening to Fort Worth Roots, this is the part of the episode where we go over all of our announcements. And the longer the show goes on, the longer these announcements get. But it's because we're doing stuff with the community and we got a lot of stuff to tell you. But we will jump into the episode soon. Let me start off by telling you about the Fort Worth Podcast Scavenger Hunt. I don't know how much I've talked about this in the previous episodes. I've been trying to get these details together. Last weekend, I got to sit down with a bunch of awesome local podcasters. First podcast is It's Probably You, The Funky Panther, The Jerry Jonestown Massacre, The Failed Podcast, uh, Fort Worth Roots, obviously, Emu Atari. Otaku, Lance, I'm sorry if I messed that up, dude. Forever Reckless Funky Town Podcast. Thanks for the Invite Podcast. And Osos Golosos Podcast. And Fort Worth Famous. Eleven podcasts are going to be involved in this Fort Worth podcast scavenger hunt. So I'm going to read you off the script that I kind of put together hastily uh, for the other podcasters so that we all be on the same page and that each other's audience all have a chance to play kind of a uniform game in between these podcasts. Here it goes. We are participating in the very first Fort Worth podcast scavenger hunt. Fort Worth Roots podcast is inviting you, the listener, to join us September 10th at Pouring Glory for the 100th episode party. The event starts at 1 p.m. and there will be grab bags, $3 draft beers, special food menu, three local bands, one local comedian, and a pop-up vendor market. To participate in the Fort Worth podcast scavenger hunt, you will need to bring the code phrase to the September 10th event where you will be entered in a drawing to win a selection of prizes. The code phrase has been broken up among 11 local Fort Worth podcasters that I just listed off for you. Uh, And you can find the list for those shows in the description for this episode. We hope you'll join us in playing the game and bring the code phrase with you September 10th to Pouring Glory. And even if you don't feel like participating in the scavenger hunt, the event is still free and it's going to be a lot of fun. With or without the code phrase. So we will be there along with 10 other podcast groups and a bunch of other awesome folks. Late to the Station is going to be playing for us. Itchy Richie and the Burning Sensations is going to be there playing for us. And a new band called The Gray. All those folks have been on the Fort Worth Roots podcast. So if you want to hear from them uh, during one of their recordings, you can go back through our catalog and just look for the corresponding episode. Now, all the details for how to play the game are going to be in the show notes for this episode. The letter that Fort Worth Roots has is the letter H. And if you didn't understand everything I just said, that's okay. This will be in the show notes. All the podcasts that I listed off are going to be involved in this, and they all have their own letter. Um, I tried to make this as non-confusing as possible, but honestly, it's a lot. (laughs) At the end of the day, this is an effort to get every one of these podcasts involved with sharing the names and information of other awesome creators inside the Fort Worth uh, community that are making podcasts. So the game is there to be fun, but it is also an elaborate ploy to get you to go check out these other shows. And like I said, I tried to make this game easy to understand, but there's a lot of details for this. If you get confused and you have questions, you can hit me up, media at fortworthroots.com, and I'll be happy to answer them. And one more time, the the podcasts that are participating in the Fort Worth Podcast Scavenger Hunt are It's Probably You, The Funky Panther, The Jerry Jones Town Massacre, The Failed Podcast, Us, uh, Emo Otaku, Forever Reckless, Funky Town Podcast, Thanks for the invite podcast, Osos Colosos, and Fort Worth Famous. And shout out to all those dudes for jumping into this weird idea with me. But I thought we could have fun with it, and uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Now, if enough of you play this, we're going to continue to do this. Not just Fort Worth Roots, but all of the podcasts that uh, I've included in this game, they're going to have access to to play this in the future for events that they're going to put on. And once you've collected probably about four or five of these letters, you're going to be able to guess it. But don't you dare cheat. You need to go and get the letters from the podcasts. Thank you. Shout out to our sponsors, Roofing Solutions by Darren Houck. You can go to roofingsolutionshouk.com. That's H-O-U-K.com. That will be in the show notes. If you go to their website, it says Roofing Solutions can help with all your residential and commercial roofing needs. Roofing Solutions by Darren Houck is locally owned and operated. We are insured and have the experience to carry out most roofing projects. Now, we're only looking for the best in each industry whenever we start 
accepting people as uh, sponsors for the Fort Worth Roots podcast. So I did my homework. These people are the ones you want to deal with whenever you're getting a roof put on. Roofing Solutions is an established company with over 30 years of experience. Darren Houck has been an award-winning leader in the roofing industry for over 30 years. Many roofing companies just pop up after a storm hits the neighborhood. These companies often have little or no experience solving roofing problems. At Roofing Solutions, we help you find the right solution for your needs. Roofing Solutions can help you work with your insurance insurance company. And if you ever have any issues with your roof, and you will because you live in North Texas and this is the worst place you could possibly have a roof. Hail damage and high temperatures, seriously high winds. You know the deal. You live here. You have a roof. Anyway, it's going to happen eventually. So make sure that you keep Darren Houck's information. And if you ever forget, you can just pull up the Fort Worth Roots podcast and I'll have his information there for you. But the phone number is 817-882-6520. Darren will actually send somebody out to do a roof inspection for you to see what kind of state your roof is in. It'd be an excellent opportunity for them to stop by, introduce themselves, and just make sure there's not something going on up there that you're unaware of. 817-882-6520. Our next sponsor, Hauk Walker Originals. You can find them at haukwalker.com. And when you go to halkwalker.com, you're going to find special, unique products for every occasion. If you're looking for an exceptional custom gift idea for anybody in your family, somebody that you love, you need to go check this out. The thing that I'm obsessed with right now on their website are their pins, because I've seen one of these, I've held it in my hand, and it's incredible. Why am I talking about pens? Well, you're just going to have to go check it out yourself. They actually came out to our informal event out there at Pouring Glory whenever all the podcasters met up to talk about the scavenger hunt, and... Angela Walker and David had brought out some tumblers, some custom tumblers, and they can do this kind of stuff for you too. They take the tumbler, they put your design on it, it looks awesome, it's custom. A wedding or a party or just a gift idea for somebody that you care about, this is where you'd go to get that done. Go take a look at what they got, halkwalker.com. Shout out to our friends at Woodpost Metalworks. You can find all their information at woodpostmetalworks.com and now you get 10% off just, just because you were here. How about that? Just because you were listening to this podcast, now you get 10% off at checkout. Use the code PODCAST817 to get your 10% discount. Woodpost Metalworks specializes in metal signs with or without LED backing, fence or gate repair and installation, light steel fabrication, industrial plasma cutting, and more. Go check out their website. You'll see home decor, metal fabrication. You'll see a lot of signs for businesses. That seems to be something that's real popular, but they've got some grills, these custom smoke pits or fire pits, whatever you call them. And I know that if you go and you check out their website at woodpostmetalworks.com, you'll be using your 10% code today. Because even if you don't buy something for yourself, you're going to see some gift ideas for some loved ones that you just can't leave on the table. One more time, that's woodpostmetalworks.com. Our guest today is a freelance music writer at Dallas Observer. He's also a freelance writer and photographer for the Fort Worth Weekly. You might not know his name, but you probably have seen some of his pictures and might have even read some of his stories. Uh, This guest was suggested to us by multiple members inside the music community here in Fort Worth. And so uh, he's a little bit of a legend, and I was excited to get him in front of the microphone. We did this recording in his uh, living room uh, at his house there in River Oaks. And uh, just a really chilled, laid-back dude, and I hope we get to have him on the show again. I do know that next time I go to a music venue, he's going to be one of the first people I look for when I walk in the door. Ladies and gentlemen, that's enough talking out of me. Thank you all for being here, and give it up for our guest today, Johnny Govea. Yeah, ask me anything. We'll talk. It's cool. <laughs> I mean... Uh, well, I always start the podcast off with making sure I get the name right. Johnny uh, Govia? That's pretty much... That's how it is. Say, I it, think, how, say it how it really okay, is. It's, I will, it's Johnny Govea. Govea. Okay. Um, and that's why I do that, because I want to make sure I pronounce it right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, the name is different because, you know, my family has a way of pronouncing it, and... Whenever I say it, they say yes, but at the, at the same time, if I'm saying Govia or Govea, mm-hmm. the Ia part, yeah, that's right, slight accent on that, I think. That's important. That's your name, right? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But my pin name is Juan R. Govia, so that's what publishes out. It's more professional, I think. Johnny's kind of my nickname. 
Okay. So, yeah. So whenever I see some of your art, either in uh, Fort Worth Weekly or the Dallas Observer, it's going to have Johnny R. No, I have Juan R. Juan R. Excuse me. No, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just it's my legal name, so I just yeah. stuck with that. Yeah. Perfect. But yeah. So all your friends call you Johnny. They do. There you go. And my Facebook is um, is Johnny, and my my Instagram is a bit different. It's um, I mean, it's Juan R. Govia. Uh, I think I have Johnny on there too, but my photo dog page is Juan Argovia. But the hashtag and the tag is kind of funny because it's Juan to know and then Juan to know photography. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know why I stuck Juan to know when I first got Instagram. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's fun. And <laughs> well, okay, yeah, it's kind of a play on words, right? Yeah. yeah. And I was like, well, okay, uh, kind of up. Uh, I don't know. I second guessed it since I started writing and doing stuff and people were getting to know me. It's kind of a funny thing. Yeah. It's all good, though. So currently you're a photographer and writer for The Observer, The Dallas Observer? Um, well, I'm more of a writer for The Observer. Okay. And I'm a, a, a music a photographer and writer for The Weekly, Fort right. Worth Weekly. Right. Um, I've written other articles that weren't a, that didn't pertain to music. It was... A, News stories. Um, I was taking photographs just for fun here in uh, the west side of Fort Worth off Las Vegas Trail area. Kind of, I think it's uh, 580, it's perfect, 580 or something. So, um, yeah, I was taking pictures of the motel signs, those old uh, architecture there off that, that whole street. It's like it's old motels and kind of run down spots too. But the editor from the Weekly noticed it, and he asked if I would be interested in writing a story to go along with it about uh, Las Vegas Trail, how it's become, what it's become. And, you know, it had a lot to do with crime and, um, you know, just the people that live there. And it's not a bad neighborhood at all. There's a lot of good people there. There's also a lot of crime, too. But at the same time, it's it was a good story. Yeah. Um the uh, co-editor thought it was really good. And he did, did a good job, and yeah, it's been working out so far. Um, so at the time, whenever they asked you to write that story, were you doing anything with Weekly? I was. Okay, I was a music writer. I've been a music writer for the Weekly um, since the pandemic started in 2020. I guess it was in the late summer of 2020, and I just pitched them a story, and I said, "Hey, um, I do. I know a little bit about music in Fort Worth from." a zine that I've put together for a couple of years. And Anthony said, yeah, that's better for the weekly, Anthony Mariani. He said, yeah, go for it. It's fine. And, um, you know, at the same time, unfortunately, one of their big writers for music, Steve Stewart, kind of signed off and said he wasn't going to write anymore for the music-wise. Um, mm. That's when everything was shutting down and there were no bars to go to. But um, people were still releasing music. So... I kind of got a tip of the hat from the editor, Anthony, and he said, well, if you want to continue writing more music, we're more than happy to take your pictures. And, you know, it's been kind of going on since then. Um, See, the last story I wrote for the Weekly was a music story, I believe. Well, it was a music concert review. Um, It was just a bit of words and mostly photos. Uh, It was Cameron Smith's um, Smile uh, live performance. And where was the last performance Smart. at? It was around Main at Southside. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a good venue. I that's like a, it. I, I, know I spent a lot of time there. <laughs> it's, they have, they're good people. Yeah, he's a good guy too. Um, There's too many names, man. I know. <laughs> it's, yes. it's hard for me. To, I forget people's names when I'm out and I'm like, um, yeah, I'm Ryan, sorry, Ryan, we met before yeah. and I'm like meeting you again. And I can't, can't. Ryan's I a good get, dude. We, Ryan? We, uh, Ryan oh, out yeah. at uh, Mass. Mm-hmm. Um, worked a lot with him trying to just streamline everything out there at Psychedelic Panther Festival. Oh, that's so cool. I got a I got a chance to kind of interact with him, and uh, anytime he needs a hand, I'm happy to help out because yeah. they they're great dudes. He's yeah, Ryan's really cool. Um, his wife, uh, gosh, I forget her name. <laughs> no, but she uh, runs um, Liberty Lounge. Okay, off of yeah. Jennings, right? Um, that's across from it's Jenna Higgs. I'm trying to think of the there's other there's two other little establishments. Mm-hmm. Um, Low key, I think, is one okay. of them. Right across the street from it. I don't spend so much time that, at Liberty, that, but no, nah, I, I I drove by there today is the reason I, uh, I remember. But that's kind of a popping little spot right there. Oh, cool. Yeah, I have to check it out. Yeah, Pretty cool. 
been, yeah, um, probably been about a year and a half since I went through a uh, low key, if that's even what it's still <laughs> called. But, oh wow! Yeah, uh, it's it's a there's so many fun spots in Fort Worth that kind of yeah. you know Magnolia is kind of the big one I always thought, and then there's West Seventh where the clubs are, and uh, there's stuff happening, and I just. I mean, I think everybody, especially the young kids, uh, or not kids, but young adults, they like going to the clubs. Yeah. And, you know, it's DJ playing some good music. And, you know, uh, when you see the crowds at live venues for local shows, you know, they got good crowds. Um, but I think it, 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 there could be more, you know, yeah. um, music-wise in Fort Worth. Well, music really ties our community together because we do have these little eclectic communities all over fort worth you know you've got the west seventh area you've got the uh, uh near south side area all these other little pockets all over fort worth but mm -hmm. the music scene really ties it all together because you might see joe savage <laughs> out there in saginaw one uh tuesday and then you might catch him saturday playing at a tim tim love place uh, uh -huh. over there close to tcu oh yeah and they're uh, all they go all over i love joe too he's a good guy joe savage is one of my faves uh, yeah. he's, he's, he, <laughs> he lives he does this uh, the most incredible things um he took that trip to Spain recently. Yeah, he just got, just got yeah. back a couple months ago. Yeah. yeah. Did you have him on the podcast? I thought you did. Yeah, or? he's been on twice, and uh, he know. actually sent me a postcard from Spain. Oh, he gave me a postcard, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're postcard cool. buddies. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're Joe Savage postcard buddies. I was so surprised <laughs> when I got that in the mail. I was like, what is that? I, I, I turned it around, and it said something like a salute or something, and, and then he wrote down, and Joe Savage I was like, Oh, wow, that was the coolest thing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I haven't even had a chance to thank him yet. Uh, oh. I've talked to him a couple times, and both times I've forgotten to say thank you, but uh, what a cool feeling to get a postcard from Spain, <laughs> right? Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, I, that but he, cool. I mean, his, 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 uh, his last name is very fitting. He is a savage, 500-mile uh, walk across Spain. Mm -hmm. What kind of human does that? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, it's beyond me. He, I, don't, I don't think I could. I remember I wrote a story about it, the one he did. Uh, oh, gosh, I think it was 2000. I think it was last year in the summer or maybe the year before. But, yeah, that was a whole piece I wrote for the weekly about his voyage. And I guess it was 40 days that he spent in Spain traveling the coast and I was yeah. like wow that's some intense stuff yeah uh, well that I but, can't wait to get him on the show again to talk about that trip and um, you know I think he'd been back in country for maybe a week and I was like Joe you gotta come talk to me about that trip man yeah. he's like well let me I'm still kind of unpacking it you know he wanted okay. some time to sit with it and really think about his trip and I mean he's still releasing those journal entries Oh yeah, that every is cool. uh, every week I think he's got a new journal entry. I haven't really looked into that, but I noticed uh, I noticed it, and it is a journal entry log uh -huh. that he's yeah. posting on Facebook. So, but he's so he is literally still unpacking that trip. <laughs> I mean, it, I, what what a voyage! I mean, what a excruciatingly long activity, um, you know, physically, but then also, uh, I mean, on a emotional, spiritual, whatever you want to call it, level. There's, there's got to be a lot there that he experienced and, you know, just having time away from work and the, the busyness of life and to be in a country with that much beauty and surrounded by people that are all kind of singular, singularly focused on, you know, betterment of oneself, I guess, because the uh, El Camino del mm -hmm. de Santiago, oh, I'm saying that that's right? Pretty, that's I'm pretty close. close. <laughs> I can't really remember it, but that was but, pretty But close. it's all about leaving where you live mm -hmm. and walking towards i guess uh in in the way of uh saint james yeah uh, which is supposed to be a, a mission of self-reflection i think so mm -hmm. so that in i guess just by the nature of it there's got to be a lot of uh stuff to unpack there so. oh, i believe i believe it i mean i mean, I mean the spiritual journey i have I've never really gone on spiritual drinking, but something like that is impressive for Joe. I, it's really as cool. soon as he told, because I think the first episode he was on with me, we talked about it, and I'm okay. like, Joe, I want to do this with you. No that way, that would be so cool. You should do it, Johnny. You should do it too. 
forget what's all good. <laughs> we'll get some real good shoes, bro. Oh, okay. I'll, I could I could probably tough it out. <laughs> I could probably tough it out. Well, we got an expert too, because Joe, oh, like, yeah. Joe has done this, and he left the country with a new set of shoes, <laughs> yeah. and he was, you know, he was pretty excited about these new shoes. So we'll have to get a full report on whether okay. or not those shoes worked out for him. We'll have to talk him into it. He'll probably be more than happy for us to come along. That would be something else, though, wouldn't it? I just oh god, yes. Forty days just walking the uh, it's a lot in the towns. I bet are beautiful. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. He was he was you know posting pictures mm -hmm. every day, and I mean some of the most beautiful countryside you've ever seen. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's oh. traveling. Uh, I don't yeah. know if that that walk would really be meant to be done as a group, though. That seems okay. like kind of a singular activity, right? I guess you're right. I don't know. I mean, um, so maybe we could all pick a different corner of Spain <laughs> and meet in the middle. That'd be cool. <laughs> I'll be at the bar at one of the town. <laughs> right, right, right. Calling <laughs> call a cab for that last hundred miles. For yeah. real. <laughs> <laughs> I would pull something like that. So okay, Johnny, I'll see you. <laughs> was, uh, so uh -huh. Johnny was working for uh, Fort Worth Weekly, kind of your first introduction into music? No, um... I mean, I had a whole zine. You might have heard of that. The whole In Lakaya zine. Is, um, it, is this your band? No, it's a it's a it's like a zine. Um, an under it's like a magazine, but you know DIY. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and it, it's talk. It was mostly focusing on the underground uh, music and art in North Texas. So, um, gosh, here we go. So this is a self published magazine that you distributed yourself. Yes. Okay. And it was like a little. It was, I mean, it looked like the Fort Worth Weekly, but yeah. it, the paper-wise in size. Right. Um, so, yeah, I put that out. Uh, I started that in 2016. And, um, you know, I was just looking, Facebook networking and, uh, you know, going to shows, taking pictures, uh, seeing what's new in the weekly news or any publication music-wise. And I would go out to these shows and meet these bands and just take photos and post them on the zine and the Kai zine's uh, Instagram or uh, Facebook page. And um, I would give them a call and say, I heard how you had new music out. And uh, I'd message them on Facebook first, then we'd have an interview about it and I'd write a brief about it or however long it is. And I'd put it up on the um, website for In the Kai, um, and then I'd Designed the paper from experience working in newsrooms um, back, I guess, in mid late 2000s, mm -hmm. 2014, I guess, uh, 15 era. Uh, so I had experience designing uh, pages with uh, just Adobe um, InDesign. And so I would, I thought about it and I was already doing some work designing another publication. Uh, they're called Ola Texas now. It's something else. But uh, yeah, so I was working on trying to get this zine out. And I was like, well, how many pages do I want? And does it depend? And it's going to cost money. So I need advertisers. So the first couple issues were just me and um, writing. And sometimes I'd have someone help. But I guess the first two years, 2016 and 17, maybe into 18, I would just write about new um, music coming out and labels and, you know, which record label in Fort Worth, Dreamy Life, or, you know, I would interview the bands through the phone or the artists through the phone and uh, record it all and just write out. And when it got to publishing, uh, after I designed the pages, I would send it off to a local... Um, I was living in Granbury, Texas at the time, so... They had a printing press, and I sent, sent, sent it to them through an email, and we'd work out the kinks, and they'd print out a 1,000 copies, and I'd pay for them and pick them up and then drive to Fort Worth, and I'd drop them off at the chat room. I'd drop them off at uh, Main at Southside. I'd drop them off at the Dreamy Life, um, Docs Records, uh, and some places in Arlington, too, so everybody had their stack. Sure. They had a couple stands, too, but... Um, and would you do this monthly or? It was monthly. Damn. Oh, well, I had nothing much to do. That seems working. like a lot of work. <laughs> I was living with my folks at the time and I was going through some rough spots and um, so this after was work. Keeping you busy? And yeah. And doing work for the other publication and 
Uh, so I just had a lot of time, and I had my computer, and I was just, I'm just going to cover music and art in Fort Worth and Dallas and Arlington and Denton. And I met a lot of interesting people during that. Um, yeah. I'm still friends with a lot of them. I mean, um, and you continue to meet more artists now that you're with Weekly and taking fo- photos and writing for them and, mm-hmm. and yeah. all that. Yeah, it's it's a lot of the different bands come out and I see them and then some touring bands um would play with some of the local bands and you know you get to see them and um yeah, it's a lot of fun I guess and it's also you I mean you put yourself out there yeah and people see that and you're like what is this about and that's why we're sitting here oh well yeah because you've put yourself out there uh, you've made well, a name for yourself I I I would like I mean. I'm trying to humble myself the best I can. Um, I don't really want to be the public figure type because, <laughs> I mean, they've already got the, Fort Worth's got that covered. Tony Green's yeah. doing a fabulous job. And, uh, you know, my good friend, um, Susie Ramon, um, she's on a couple pod. she hosts a podcast, um, uh, Texas, oh gosh, what's it called? Fort Worth Locals or something like that. Okay. And then the Jerry Jones Town Massacre podcast. Uh, I know a couple of them dudes. Yeah, they're good guys. Yeah. They're fun. Um, Susie's kind of in with them. She was part of the show. Then she's back and forth, I guess. I don't know. You have to ask her. But yeah, um, yeah I met a lot of interesting, fun people. And uh, just going to shows and seeing the same groups and same people at the same shows. And you talk to them and you become friends. Um, Gosh, I've known Susie for a while. She's my bestie. Yeah. <laughs> she likes to call me best. That's cool. Uh, yeah, she's a cool chick. She's a lot of fun, too. And she knows a lot about music and um, the local music, anyway. And, uh, you know, she had um, a bit for the Pirate Fort Worth when it was going on. Did uh, you say Pirate Fort Worth? Pirate, yeah, uh, the Pirate. It was a hmm. Fort, uh, Fort Worth underground local radio station. And it really was a decent, you know, radio station. You know? What did it play on? Got it. I can't remember what the, what it was. That the, must have flown under my radar. Oh, they're not together anymore. They sure. kind of they kind of stopped playing music. Um, I guess it was pandemic t- era, and then they couldn't keep it up. Um, mm. Yeah, they had Matthew on there with the Matthew Show for a bit. Uh, it was the pirate, yeah, and. Um, I was doing a little bit of work with ticket subs on working with them. Uh, it was a concert review, a 10 hour bit. Oh, 10 minute bit. Sorry. Not 10 Damn. hour. God, it was okay. 10 minutes. So. <laughs> yeah, that's too much. I, uh. So it was a 10 minute bit and I was, was hosting it with um, a few friends. I started off hosting it with um, Dreamy Life's uh, Jim Valet. Uh, so, It'd be me and him. We'd have mics like this and stuff on, and on the show. And uh, we would just talk about the shows we saw that past weekend. And uh, it ran every two weeks. It was fun. I just couldn't do it all the time, you know, so yeah. I kind of dropped it. But Susie was doing the same work like I was saying, and she had, like, a shows of the week or something. So she'd say who's playing, when, and where that weekend. And uh, that was a cool bit for her. And, um, you know, I believe the people that – or running that was um, Sally oh gosh, and her husband, and they both have experience in news journalism and radio, so they made a good team. Right. And so they were working together. I think it's Sally Rohde and uh, her husband, who slips my mind. There's too many people to yeah. remember. Yeah. But yeah, it was a it was a decent uh, like little local radio station. Man, yeah. It sucks to watch stuff like that peter out. We lost uh, a lot of really cool scenes from the COVID thing. But oh, I know. It is uh, encouraging to see the way some of it is kind of seemingly roaring back to life. Mm. And uh, uh, e- even now, you know, here we are, middle of 2022, and we're still having little pockets of these COVID oh, I know. outbreaks. I mean, it's still going on. If you it's, turn on the TV yeah. or you listen to the radio or whatever, it seems like it's almost all been forgotten. But, you know, mm-hmm. there are still people getting sick from it. Um, a friend of mine who I will leave leave nameless, okay. yeah. uh, she's a nurse. And uh, I can't remember which one of the hospitals around here she works at. But she got diagnosed with influenza and COVID about two weeks ago. Oh, no. Um, all at the same time. 
Damn. You know? So, oh, I mean, it's man. like, okay, you know, everybody's out doing their Whoa. thing. Looks like life is normal now, but mm. that is still a threat. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I, it's scary because, you know, people, like, we go to shows and, and you and me, we go out in public and I guess more than all, more than another person, any other sure. person going yeah. to shows in large crowds, and mm. seeing and meeting people, functions or whatever. We're high risk. Yeah, <laughs> we really are. <laughs> I mean, I've kind of noticed that and I'm like, well, I'm not. I'm going to take it easy this weekend and stay home, maybe talk to some friends, maybe have friends over, but... Well, I still keep my distance, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I, just, I, I don't put myself in the middle of things. Okay. And when I talk to people, I try to, <laughs> you know, this is... I can hear uh, you from here, you know? <laughs> right, right, right. I've definitely... I've always had a, like a... I, I feel like a, a bigger personal bubble requirement than most people, but, you know, I... Uh, now oh. after covid it's increased by a couple of feet you know <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm, I'm not trying to be rude but i can smell uh, your breath from here we're good yeah <laughs> i get you i get that and it's weird like for me i i guess i'll go out and someone will see me and they want to hug because i'm a hugger yeah and i'm like oh god no no no, no. i'm gonna have to bathe myself in pure yeah. after this <laughs> just like okay uh, everybody's a sewer rat <laughs> oh god no <laughs> It just sucks because you're at these shows and you want to hug all these people and you want right. to be close to you're people. You're there to be social. Yeah. And then, I mean, what you would, the mask helped, I, I think. I, mean, I had my mask that I would wear and, um, you know, some of the rules they came out with uh, where at the bars you could only, if you were sat at a spot, you could take your mask off. But if you're standing or if you're walking around, your mask has to be on. And, uh, yeah, I think that, had uh, that took Fort Worth to getting some use to because the bartenders had to remind everybody, including me sometimes. I'd be talking and standing uh, with somebody who's sitting down, and you know, one of the bartenders would come, Johnny, you need to put your mask on <laughs> or sit down, and then you can take it off. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. got it. Now. And they know your name, so you know uh, they're serious. Oh, uh, yeah, I have mean, their friends. I had to ask you, you, you brought up Dreamy Life Records uh, twice now. Is that uh, uh, it's uh, three guys, um, Cameron Smith, okay. That um, sounds familiar. He's a, well, he, he's he's a really good musician. He's yeah. been around with Dreaming Life for a good while, a couple, okay. maybe ten or more years. You remember the other two? Oh yeah, uh, Jim Valet. Um, he's an old DJ. He knows a lot about music, and uh, they're at the store. Uh, D Cameron and um, Jim are at the store a lot. Uh, Robbie is also one of the owners, but he lives in Seattle. Oh, okay. he moved to Seattle not too long ago. Robbie Rucks. Okay. And, uh, yeah, uh, him and his wife just moved and said, yeah, Dreamy Life kind of cool. Maybe we'll meet halfway from touring bands and travel and play some music one and then hit up Fort Worth again. But, uh, yeah, Dreamy Life's a good, a good label. I I'm fascinated with studios because one of the first times I really got invited to a serious uh, music situation was uh, Orb Recording Studios in Austin. Oh, cool. And when I walked into that thing, I was like, man, this is a mecca of creativity. This is this is a palace of invention. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. just, it felt like a, I don't know, it just felt special, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, um, I am blanking on the name. Uh -huh. uh, Joe. Hey, is it local? Yeah. Okay, Joe. Savage? Oh, no, we did that already. Um, he, he, oh, is Cloudland. He, is he cl oh, Cloudland. Joe. Joe um, Tacky. Joe Tacky yeah. has got Cloudland. That's him. And um, that studio is the, f I think that's the first one I've been in since I got back to Fort Worth from Austin. Uh -huh. And uh, it was just so nice to, to be back in a studio, mm -hmm. you know, with all the sliders <laughs> and the soundboards and the gizmos and the doohickeys and uh -huh. you know i don't know what any of this stuff does it's pure magic I mean, to me yeah. no, but, <laughs> but it it just it feels so special and then and joe is uh he's into um analog yeah. so he tries to do he's trying to keep that alive it's a dying art there's not a lot of people that do it um and i thought that was really cool too so Okay. Um, I well, I just I don't know. So I've always got questions when people bring up studios. I'm like, where's that one at? <laughs> oh, right on. Well, um, I guess well, this is kind of different when there's a label and then a studio because the Dreaming Life label and the Cloudland um, stu uh, recording um, studio were kind of working together. 
that's why that sounds so damn familiar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 And so, so Dreamy Life used to operate out of that studio, right? I believe they still sometimes do. Okay. I, um, I'm not for certain. I, 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 yeah. I never asked them, but uh, when Joe Joe bought the stu- the recording Codland recording studio from, uh, I believe Robbie Rux, who was the Dreamy Life guy, and because uh, he moved. And so I think Joe is pretty much, I think Britt Robichaud, another local who, I'm not pronouncing his name right, I think it's Robichaud. Well, he's Dreamy Life fam. Um, yeah, he did some recording for there too. Uh, Peter Rowenga has, I can't remember, I'm really bad at last names. It's rough, I, yeah. Is Peter Waringer. I always call him, I never really called him his last name, he's called Peter. Yeah. But he, he did some work out of Cloudland too, and... Uh, He's doing some recording stuff at, um, I think it's The Cove. Okay. Um, and that's a studio, but he's worked with a lot of locals. Um, he's in uh, Denver Williams' band, uh, Denver Williams' The Gas Money, and he helped record that album. And he's doing a lot of good work. And um, he'd be kind of cool to have on your podcast. Yeah. And I could mention some people, but yeah. Uh, give me a list. I've, <laughs> I've got uh, I've got like a 10-person list from 50 different people, but oh, I'm, wow. I'm going to get to all of them. Oh, for sure. It's just going to take a minute. Oh, I got you. Man, <laughs> and you're some doing people, a good job, though. <laughs> I, I mean, you're always, I mean, it's nonstop. You have a new episode up, I guess, almost every all the Monday. time. Every Monday, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, you know, whenever my schedule will allow for it, I sit down and I do as many recordings as I can. And then I try to release two every week for like an extended period of time. Okay. I call it clearing the backlog, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's just there's so much talent here. And um, we have a real opportunity in Fort Worth with the podcast community and individuals like Johnny uh. that go out there <laughs> and write these stories. It's, it's the connecting fibers that bring our city together. You know, you've got your musicians and your artists and your... Um, uh, comedians and uh, uh, yeah. all these people that are out there creating something mm-hmm. and you know they don't have the money to get their message out there I know. but here we are doing what you do mm-hmm. and and then the podcasting thing on the fringe side of it um but this connects the community otherwise these people it's hard i mean how how are they going to get their voice out you're yeah, right so I mean, but the, the reward for myself, and I think you nailed it earlier, is that we've kind of been brought in as honorary guests of that community, you know? Okay. And, uh, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I try to humble myself as much as possible. But, I mean, I, I know people. And I, like, yeah. I like meeting new people and talking with them. I'm a journalist. So. But you're, you're just as essential um, as, as, w- as what's you, going on you know? with the other side of the community, the musicians and the artists. They have got to have a way to get their word out, to get their art to mm-hmm. the public. And that's the same for you. you know? Yeah. And I'm, I'm starting to see that now. Yeah. You know, this was always just going to be a thing that I did. And now oh, it's, wow. it's, it's turning into, wow, I know people. And yeah. when I, when I go to <laughs> festivals and things, oh, wow, people know me too. See, yeah. you know? <laughs> and you don't know who they are. I mean, I mean, sometimes people come up to me and shake my hand. I'm like, um, remind me who you are again. Right. Yeah. And they know me from social media. And right. Stuff, so I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's different. They're very yeah. active on social media. Oh God, I'm a ham. <laughs> I'll post the stupidest stuff. I swear. I love it. I, I mean, I want people to laugh on there, and I'm, <laughs> if I see something funny. I'll, I'll say, oh, you got to see this. It spells yeah. this. Yeah. Um, I think mine looks a lot like yours. Okay. <laughs> I knew we would get along because oh, you good. know that that's really all social media should be used for is just telling <laughs> telling jokes. I know it. Keep the bullshit out of there. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, oh, but I mean, I I mean, you got to be careful on social media too because. You don't want to upset the wrong person, and I had an incident that happened to me last night where I was I was talking to somebody I was wanting to know more about something, and I said it was music stuff. And I, I I felt so upset at myself. I said, "Well, you know, if you're asking social media, I hope it helps, but there's a lot of other people, photographers and journalists that you know we try to help too, and we will help you, but you know, get it." Get out there, and yeah. you gotta talk to these people. And if you're gonna do that, then you know, you gotta hit the streets and take your camera and tag the bands and make something of it. If you have a media outlet already, that's great. And there are a couple underground outlets that will also hire you too and uh, yeah. pay 
probably wouldn't be that much, but being putting yourself out there, they could help. Um, oh. I can name a few. Uh, I have an article coming out in Lone Sound magazine. Lonesome? Lone Sound. Lone Sound, Lone Sound. okay. Yeah. And, um, when will it be out? Well, they're still trying to get the publication okay. together. Yeah. It's kind of DIY, I guess. Um, I turned in my story like two weeks ago or last week, I believe. It was kind of late, earlier last week. Oh, yeah. It could be a couple months then, huh? Well, Especially the deadline kind of extended from, I guess, July 5th to now and haven't not heard anything back. Yeah. But uh, the editor is um, Jamie. I think it's Polito. Um, Are they out of Fort Worth? I think she's Dallas. Okay. So, yeah, I think she's Dallas. She's working with um, my photographer, Dallas friend, uh, Andrew Sherman, who shoots photos for Dallas Observer concert photography for them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Um, but yeah, um, so um, they're working together as like a team. And um, I was talking to Jamie one time on social media, on like Messenger, and so well, I have a story that I wrote for the Observer, but I switched it around and wanted to change it to make it two on two different topics. And um, it's coming out. It's this one is a. Uh, about a concert photographer who was a he was a kid going to shows back in the seventies. Okay. And he'd sneak in his Minolta camera. And he got the most amazing photos of bands like Sex Pistols, uh I mean, Freddie Mercury, mm -hmm. all these David Bowie, and he would sneak in his camera and just be right up front stage. And they were really good. Yeah. And so I spoke with him, and I was like, man, we got to get a story about this. So I did an interview with him. The first one was uh, the Sex Pistols' uh, final show in Dallas. I believe it's the Longhorn Ballroom way back in the day. And Curtis Smith, who's the guy that I wrote the story about, he had a whole um, – he had film photos that were amazing. And it was near the anniversary of that show – so the Dallas Observer editor was like, that would be a cool story. So um, she hit me up. She's like, hey, I want a story about that. Do an interview. I said, okay, I got you. And I did that. And I talked to him about all the concerts he photographed. There's a lot. Uh, but we focused on the Sex Pistols with this one. And he talked about um, everything that happened that night. And Well, it's on the Dallas Observer web page. Uh, online site and uh, if you just search for it but this what one would, what would they search if they wanted to find I it I guess it would be um, like last night at the Longhorn Ballroom or Sex Pistols uh, photographer shoot it's it had taglines like Sex Pistols and Curtis Smith okay Curtis C-U-R-T-I-S Smith S-M-I-T if I can find it I'll put it in the show notes okay well, that's, well yeah. we got a lot of talk well so that would work too yeah <laughs> <Okay>. well, <it's, laughs> that'd be cool and um so that was a really cool story because, um, uh, I mean, he was, I guess he was 14 or 16 going to the show with his, with his older friends and his older family, brothers, and they got him in and they would have to sneak in sometimes. <laughs> so they'd sneak him in the back and, you know, he's got his cameras hiding under his jacket or something. So he's set to take pictures of the Sex Pistols. He got Johnny Rotten, uh, just, what is their names? But I remember he got... Um, most of the band members and the opening band too. Uh, and I saw some photos. I was like, these are so cool. So I did write it for, for the Dallas River, like I said. And um, the one for Lone Sound, like we were talking about, is going to be about all the concerts and some of the best moments he snapped when he was a teenager. With that same guy. With, this, with Curtis Smith, so you yeah. Get the cool, you get the full scope, not that's, just the Sex Pistols. Right, right, right. Now, if they'd have caught him back then, they'd have, they'd have grabbed that camera, they'd have smashed it to pieces. Yeah, they really would have. But he, it's so funny because he took this everywhere. He'd take it to <laughs> huge... And this is a big camera. It's a full-body Minolta. Well, I guess it, it was a right. Minolta, and he would sneak it in and just <laughs> stick it up with the, and just snap his photos from putting it on the air at the stage and there's videos of him on YouTube for that last Sex Pistol show um, when before you can see him in the crowd yeah before yeah you, before Sid Fages passed away and you could see his see this his hand up in the <laughs> air trying to take a photo that's crazy it's, it's a, it was pretty fun just watching I'm that trying to like, picture wow. this 14 year old kid <laughs> carrying, long hair carrying yeah. in this massive camera <laughs> 
Well, I don't know. I, I it was a little. I guess he said it was a like a pocket size. I don't know how big. That oh, okay. I mean, it well, wasn't like possible. huge. Right? I don't know. Possible. But he could not. They did would not let him take it. Anybody let anybody take it in a camera, so he right. had to sneak it in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now I, I saw a picture of you not too far back on your Facebook feed with the Minolta. Is that is that your go to um, well, film camera? I, I have a couple cameras. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you shoot a lot in film? I I have for about a year. Um, I like it and I enjoy it. Yeah, and, um, you can do some interesting stuff with film. Um, stuff that you can't do with digital. Well, digital's easy. I mean, you right, can take a picture right. of anything and edit it. Right. I right. kind of like the nostalgia of yeah, film because. Yeah. You have a role. You have to shoot it and 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 you know put everything together, whatnot, lenses, and then you have to wait until they come out and see how they look. Yeah, and it's 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 the anticipation of it is I like. I know. Yeah. I, well, and I say I know. Like I'm not a photographer, but oh, I, I remember that feeling. You know, whenever you would. Uh, Wait for a roll of film to get developed, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and and sometimes you would hang on to that roll, going, "Oh man, these are gonna. <laughs> I hope these turn out good because we oh. saw some cool stuff, right?" And you took pictures, oh. and now you got the roll. Now you got to wait to develop it, and then whenever you give it to mm. them, and yeah, yeah, you know, maybe it's one hour photo. One oh, hour yeah. photo was never one hour photo. It was like <laughs> maybe the next day if you were lucky. Oh, cool! But, yeah. You know, you get finally get those back, and then they'd hand you your envelope and. It's mm-hmm. like opening a Christmas present. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And I think film is really coming back. Um, no one makes it anymore, right? There, well, How do you even find film? Yes. It's, there's Photoshops. You can go to Fort Worth Camera and they'll sell a bit, but there's a really great spot in Fort Worth called, first they were called Fort Worth Photo Lab. The building okay, is yeah. on Cambuie. Uh-huh. And uh, it says Fort Worth, film, Fort Worth Photo Lab, but they changed their name to Legacy Photo Lab. Oh. And that is... I love that. Those guys are great. They're like local uh, film celebrities that work there. And, you know, they post a photo they took on an ancient camera that looks beautiful. And, you know, they'll post it on Instagram and 100 likes right away. And it's just, they're so good. I love it. They're, <laughs> they're really cool guys. And, um, and they it's just a whole community because every once in a while they'll go on photo shoots during the weekend and they'll post the the event, um, you know, on, on Instagram and invite people out and they'll just walk around and help each other out for shooting photos. That's really cool. It is really cool. I mean, I think really know what they're doing too. You can learn a lot. You got to with, with film, right? Because mm-hmm. you don't get the uh, gratification of having it pop right back up on a display. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, um, do they have some now that will do that. Where you, where you do have the digital oh, display? Oh, well, I'm not too sure. I mean, I've that never, would, I've I never think seen there it. are. Um, it would make sense, but I've just never seen it. I mean, I think so. I don't know. Because my, my first camera was a, um, not Canon, the other one. Nikon? Nikon. I, had, I bought a Nikon kit, and it's just very san- standard stuff. And the thing that, that uh, got me to learn the camera was just taking a shit ton of pictures, uh, <laughs> playing with the ISO and the shutter speed and everything, and just really understanding the camera. How did anybody ever figure out how to use those cameras before digital is beyond me. Because I, I never used uh, film other than watching my dad use film. Um, and then, of course, you know, as kids, we had the uh, disposable uh, wind yeah. and snap, you know, uh-huh. our version of the uh, <laughs> selfie. Right, you know, hey, I've got the disposable <laughs> cameras were great. And back then they were so cheap, you could pick one up for four or five bucks. Now they're like 20 something. Oh, yeah? They're expensive. If you can find them, okay. those disposable cameras are expensive. That's different. Well, yeah. the thing with film is, I just recently found out that they'll have pocket cameras that um, point and shoot and mm-hmm. they take film, but they come out with the most amazing images and mm-hmm. they're good in their light too. And I've been wanting an Olympus, and I, I don't know too much about it, but I did a bit of research in different ISO film, and from Kodak or Fuji, um, you can get some great colors yeah. coming out of those. Yeah. And, you know, they're just point and shoot like a disposable camera, yeah. but you actually have to um, insert the film and uh, close it back up, and you're good to go. And is um, it is it kind of is it a roll or is it like a Polaroid? It's like a thirty five millimeter roll. Okay. And, you take, yeah. and then you when you roll, when you're finished with the roll, you just 
reel it back up sure. and pop it out yeah. and then develop it. Mm. But um, I was reading online and yeah, film is just for, is for a new generation of people um, that like to take photos. So uh, it's making a comeback. I like to think so. And you know, there's some really cool stuff you can come out with, with different types of film in their ISO. Yeah. Um, and then there's some film that's super expensive that you can buy $75 a roll and you'll get the most amazing, brightest, like colored um, photos out of them. Yeah. And I've never really experienced I don't know where to find it, but I mean, you can order it online. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in shooting for film uh, on, you know, a mirror camera, Canon A1, Canon A1, or any type of film camera, I would say check out Legacy Photo Lab, Fort Worth Photo Lab. And did you uh, say they're still on Bowie? Camp Bowie? They're on Camp Bowie. Yeah. Okay. Um, Joe Tacky, whenever we were talking about analog sound at uh, Cloudland, was was trying to describe it to me as analog provides you with more warmth mm. to the to the sound. And I wonder if film is kind of like that in that regard. Like you get a... Uh, a, a warmer feel to the picture, maybe. I, I get that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You would. And I mean, if nothing else, I could understand the the nostalgia behind film that would actually give you that implied <laughs> warmth. Maybe it's not something quantifiable. Maybe it is, but huh. even if it's not, yeah, you you could uh, you could say that just just the nostalgia of having it on film. Would, would provide you with that extra warmth. I love that. And you're yeah. absolutely right, because you, you kind of put those two together, and I had never really thought about that, but yeah, you're right. Um, it's a, well, so there's a photo um, rule, I, I guess, for film, is the uh, best time to uh, shoot photos outside would be the golden hour. Right. It's right at sunset, mm -hmm. uh, between, like, I guess, depending where you're at, I guess, 7 to 8, or uh, maybe 6 to 9. Last uh, 59 minutes of the day. I, yeah, something Somewhere like that. There. Yeah, and it's you've got a nice warm setting. You know, you're outside, sun is setting, things aren't as bright. Right. Uh, depending on if it's cloudy or not. Sure, um, sure. And you can also shoot during the day with full sunlight and get some cool photos too. But everyone, I've, I mean, the phrase "golden hour" kind of took that into yeah. uh, the film world. You know, um, perfect lighting for outside shots of yeah. just buildings or something neat or you know. mm -hmm. um so I guess you, that kind of ties in with the whole warmth of and comparing the whole nostalgia of analog and film photography and uh that whole yeah the nostalgia like you said yeah I get, that's kind of i get that that's really cool yeah. yeah um you were mentioning analog um i wrote a story uh just past it was the last story i wrote for the weekly and um, it was over a rock band called Novocaine. Hmm, okay. And, uh, Are they local? They're local, yeah. I think Weekly will only publish stuff from Fort Worth, Arlington, okay. maybe a little outskirts. Yeah. Um, yeah, these guys are local. Uh, and uh, they're like, a, like, they got an Alice in Chains vibe. Okay. And that's kind of what they grew up on. Nice. And they're brothers. Um, and uh, their drummer is a friend of theirs that they've known since third grade. And they keep putting out music, but the last album they released was on analog. Mm -hmm. And they liked, and that's what it, they were kind of saying. They liked that whole nostalgic kind of, you know, feeling of music back then that they kind of would grow up on, I guess, yeah. at an early age. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you listen to it, you kind of, I mean, I'm, I'm not too sure if I could tell the difference or if anybody really could, but it just does kind of sound like that warmth that you were saying, yeah. you know, like, and it's a great album, you know. They're good guys. They they've been playing a lot of music and um, since I guess 2010 or whatnot. And uh, they really bring it on stage too. That's they've got a good stage performance. That's awesome. Yeah. And and they're gigging around here. I believe so. Yeah, I uh, don't think they have plans for tour. Um, yeah, they're local, and I don't know their next show honestly. But uh, I bet we could find them at Mass probably. Yeah. I bet you More anything. Than that sounds like something that would hit Mass stage. More tulips. Yeah. You know, More tulips. Um, yeah. Lola's would probably have them. I bet they put Lola's have you too. caught a show out at Lola's yet? Man, I feel bad because I haven't. It's okay. Don't worry about it. But I mean, I it's want it's to. been open for a month now. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I went out and checked uh, Austin Mead out. Okay, that was incredible. Yeah. That dude's stage performance is next level. <laughs> 
that's, and cool. that, that's something that I really pay attention to because I can listen to your music online. Oh, God. But yeah. I love going to a show and just seeing these guys getting it. You that's know what fun. I mean? They really bring some good energy, man. It really. Yeah. yeah. His bass guitarist, his drummer. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, Austin, he's he's a character, man. He's, he's, he's bigger than life. Like, he's just a... He's a character. Cool. He doesn't even seem like a human. <laughs> <laughs> the name rings a bell, but I kind of get... Like, well, I'd never heard of him, but a buddy of mine uh, brought him up. And he's like, you know who you should have on your show is Austin Mead. Oh, cool. And uh, I'm like, well, I'll check him out. And I listen to some of his music, and I'm like, this guy's pretty good. Cool. And he's got... It's so hard to put stuff into different categories right now. Like, as far as, like, what genre is that? I have no idea. Yeah, you're right. I can't even tell you what Austin Mead is. If I had to put him in anything, I'd say rock. Okay, cool. I would say rock. Cool. But somebody could fight me on that, and they'd probably be right. Uh, <laughs> it's all different sometimes. Like, I mean, you've got the singer-songwriters. Mm -hmm. They kind of have that acoustic playing. And uh, then you've got um, Outlaw Country. Right, then, right. And you've got Americana, and that's pretty much country, but kind of indie. It's, it's, it's kind of all over the place. But, uh, you know, it, once you hear, I guess Americana is kind of like that, uh, the Vandaliers or... Uh, they're really big Americana band from Fort Worth, and uh, you've got um, other Americana bands like, uh, uh, gosh, it's hard to tell these days. And I guess Dallas musicians that play that country rock, you know, mm -hmm. they'll play an acoustic guitar, but they'll still be singing like and screaming in the mic. Yeah, and you know, no, they'll they'll be dressed up in you know those hats, not cowboy hats, but the, the flat brim hats when they go out and <laughs> they got their vests and their their boots on and all this cool stuff hanging from like jewelry everywhere <laughs> makes makes for a badass show they they're for their badasses yeah. i like the vandaliers a lot they're they've been around for a while and they're touring in overseas right now so you uh you, you're all over the place uh writing stories and taking pictures and mm. you're, you're heavy into the music scene here in fort worth and in dallas it sounds like a little bit in dallas yeah. so I got to ask you this, and I know this is an uncomfortable question, <laughs> but it, yet we got to ask some of the hard questions. Um, give give me two of your favorite venues. Like, if you've got oh, somebody man. coming to Fort Worth for the first time, and they're like, I want to see live music, where are you going to take me? Okay. What's your first? What's your second? And, you know, full apologies to everybody else, because I'm putting Johnny on the spot. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> we we love all wanna... the venues. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> um, well, Okay. Um, Fort Worth, I, what I like to go to, and it seems some of the touring sh bands and some of the local bands play at, are usually, um, you know, they're not metal, they're more like indie or punk. Sure. And they'll play mostly at Mass or Tulips. Sure. And you know, I think those two are the ones I'm usually at for catching a show. Right. Um, Tulips is a lot newer, or is newer, and has opened a, a little... I guess it was the end of the pandemic, kind of, in late 2020 or early 2021. And they were having some um, really cool events, and they just kind of blew up with some of the shows. And it, Mass is the same way, too, because they'll have touring acts that will sell out, but they're like underground touring yeah, acts, yeah. music and indie, that uh, you don't necessarily hear on the radio, but they're really good, and yeah. they have a following. Um, so yeah, I guess I would say Mass and Tulips. I would say Lola's too, but you know they they just moved yeah. and I haven't really gotten. You haven't tasted that one yet. I haven't tasted that yeah. one. No. Well, I'm uh I'm proud of them for how well they put that place together. Like it's cool. it's great, and they took a lot of the artwork from the old Lolas and they put it in the new one. Um, you know, renditions of it or not not copies, but I mean they they tried mm -hmm. to take. The, the spirit of the old Lola's and injected into this nice, pretty new <laughs> venue. And mm. for whatever it's worth, they tried. Um, I, I don't feel like it translated well. It doesn't feel anything like the old Lola's, but it is an incredible venue. Cool. I think they've got years of incredible uh, shows to put on there, lots of good times and memories to be made. So um, I, th I think it was a smart move whatever I, I like it a lot and Fancy. there was so much room out there my god there is uh i mean or is there uh, yeah yeah austin uh mead probably you know he probably brought a hundred more people than he thought he would was going to cool. i would it was a huge crowd that's but awesome. it did not feel crowded okay and that that's a now 
man, they could they could do with another bathroom. Because you know how the old Lolos was like that, too. There was oh, a one yeah. holer inside, right? Yeah. Well, it's kind of like that now. They've got two in there. They've got a, a two-holer bathroom. But oh, wow. That was the first time I've ever seen a line out the men's bathroom. Oh, no. I had women. <laughs> women were walking by laughing at us like, how's it feel? We were oh, like, ah. No, I'm sure they'll figure that out. It was probably one of the. They'll probably add another bathroom. I don't know. Hopefully, if it's that problem. Yeah. Well, but it's we'll funny, see. though, yeah. But it's beautiful, and oh, uh, yeah. I will be back. I will go back to Lola's to see more shows. I uh, can't wait to, oh, to cool. see what else they got pumping out of there. But um, yeah, I feel you on Mass. Um, for me, Mass has just the best vibe. It's, it's chill. It's laid back. Mm-hmm. Everybody's good people there. Yeah. Nobody's coming there to start shit. Yeah. And I, I don't know where in Fort Worth. Well, yes, I do. <laughs> Billy Bob's or, oh, yeah. you know, there's there's some venues in town I won't go to, but Mass is, is one I migrate to. If if somebody I know is playing at Mass, or even if it's somebody I haven't heard of yet, I'm I'm likely to go to that one. Definitely. Um, and then Tulips, man, I've only been there, uh, yeah, I've only been there once okay. so far, and it was for Palooza. Oh, cool. Did you check that out? Man, he was hitting me up wanting me to go, to, wanting me to go and check it out, but, you know, I was kind of, I think I don't remember what happened and I forgot or I was reminded mm-hmm. last minute and I was already doing something else. Yeah. So I couldn't make it. But Lou's cool guy. I would love to have Lou Charles on the Fort Worth Roots podcast I'll just to him. talk about how badass that was. That's cool. You that, should do it. That's the first hip hop centered event that I've been to in in a while. And mm-hmm. it, it was great. Uh-huh. He he had some incredible artists up there. Um, the energy in that place was at a ten. It oh. it was just great. And oh. so for, for me, that being the first time I've been to Tulips, um, I was just blown away. Okay. And yeah. I, I, I like the venue. I'd, mm-hmm. uh, I'd have to go back to get a real read on the place. But oh, okay. that particular event that Lou Charles put on was, mm-hmm. it was great. It was yeah. perfect. I didn't get to stay for the whole thing. That's all good. Because I'd, I'd worked like a 15-hour shift that day. <laughs> oh, no. And I was just beat. So oh, I, I think well, I made it to about made 11 it, yeah. o'clock. And uh, yeah. I want to say this dude's name is Brennan Cole. Uh, was first or second guy up on the stage, and it was just, it was nuts. The, oh, cool. You know, that stage presence that we've already uh-huh. talked about, um, that guy's got it down. That's awesome. So uh, wow. I will definitely be back to that one. So you're, you're, you're calling it right, man. Those are some really good venues. <laughs> there are some venues that I, I, um, I'm i curious about. The Real Club, for instance. I have not been there. Where's um, it at? Well, they're down, well, they're in the West Side, Fort Worth. Okay. And, um, they're off Altamir, um, behind the shopping you know, uh, malls. Um, let's see, what was it called before? Well, it's been the Rail Club. Um, they usually do metal shows and rock shows. Oh, okay. uh, I think the owner kind of called it quits, and there was a big dispute during the pandemic where they wanted to stay open, and uh, they also didn't want to lose their liquor license. And uh, they, that's, it's just they bring a lot... It's just troublesome things happen, kind of. But I don't want to throw them under the bus yeah. or anything. I saw a lot of good shows at the Real Club. I saw mostly punk shows. I saw uh, the, the Dead Kennedys uh, there re- like a couple years ago, uh, but it was a different frontman. It wasn't Jello Biafra. It was uh, Skip, Ron Skip Greer. And it was a cool punk show. Um, and so they headlined and pretty packed for a for the Rail Club, and they've got some other bands that roll through, I believe. I just haven't kept up with them since since uh, the owner was kind of like, he's done. Um, but yeah, uh, Rail Club's decent venue. I just, they've gotten some bad raps sometimes. Yeah, but, that'll uh, happen. Yeah, they're a good, they're, they're good venue. Um, but I just don't go there that often. Um, you know, there's also bar venues, like uh, bars that have a stage like Twilight Lounge. I like Twilight. Mm-hmm. I have some shows. Good vibe. Too, yeah. yeah. I've seen uh, Lindsay Hightower play there. Oh, cool. I've seen uh, The Traumatics um, with uh, Doc Rock. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> I think that might be it. And then whoever was playing before or after them. But uh, I, I do like that place. Yeah. It's real yeah. nice. It's very, very vibe. laid back. It's got a really good green room, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let me think. Um, I had a... But they had a. I was there not too long ago selling prints at an auction, mm-hmm. and so I had my photos up and uh, 
It was a really cool vibe. And people are really nice. But I haven't seen a show that I don't, I don't think I have. And um, I've been wanting to catch a show, but they're kind of sporadic, I what think. What was the name? Uh, Twilight. I don't know. Oh, we're still talking about Twilight. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, Twilight. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it was the same venue we're talking yeah. about. But okay. um, yeah, they have a stage, but it's also a really nice bar. Yeah. And, it's, and, you, and when you move some things around, bands will play on the stage. And yeah. I just haven't really checked out a band yet, I don't think. I was really surprised because whenever... Um, the, the first time I went there was to see Lindsay Hightower, the Hightower band. And um, we got there before the band showed up. And I'm looking at this place and I'm going, where's the band supposed to play? Yeah. And then they got up there, they set up. And let me tell you something. I have never seen the sound guy so laser focused on his job. He spent 20 to 30 minutes going through levels, listening to stuff. He would stand at different corners of the room, play on his tablet, have them, you know, you know check mic one, mic two, whatever. And I mean, he spent a lot of time making sure that the sound was perfect. Oh, cool. And then whenever they got started and everybody started piling from the green room and from outside and then more people started to show up, that place filled up and wow. it, it didn't feel crowded and it was great sound. Cool. And, and so after seeing it, uh, play out like that. I'm like, okay, yeah, no, this is wonderful. Cool. But cool. whenever you walk in there and there's nobody <laughs> on the stage, you're looking at that thing going, nah. I know. Nah. Is that is that it? I kind of got that vibe too. <laughs> but it's perfect. Hang out there, but it works. Yeah, yeah, it really does. That's cool. And if I if they lose that sound guy, they got to get another dude just as good because mm -hmm. that guy's on point. Wow, that's cool. I, I haven't met him. I don't know his name, but shout okay. out, sound dude. Shout out. I know. I'm sound guy. Um, yeah, I guess we could keep talking about venues. Um, let's see here, uh, Fort Worth. Uh, you know, there's bars that'll just have a band come and play. A lot of good ones. Yeah, yeah. Boiled Owl. Um, Eagle Point. Chat room sometimes. You been to Eagles Point? No. What's that? Uh, Joe Savage plays at okay. Eagles Point up in. Um, I want to say it's still <laughs> Saginaw. Oh. Um, and that's the main road that runs through there. I cannot. It might actually be Maine. Hmm. Uh, but anyway, it's called Eagles Point. It's just inside uh, Saginaw, I believe, that is still Saginaw. And then there's another location down in Burleson, yeah. uh, Eagles Point. He plays at both. Oh, wow. So, but I believe you can catch him every Tuesday at the one out there in Saginaw. I know. Don't quote me on that. Oh, I'll, 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 we'll figure <laughs> it out. But that, that's a cool little bar. Um, I, I do, uh, okay. New ownership. And uh, they've got a damn good menu. The food's incredible. Uh. And anybody that supports one of my musician friends is... Okay, in my book. So. That's cool. Right on. Yeah. Um, I've been, uh, I feel so bad because I, I know there's venues and I haven't been to them yet. And right now I'm juggling with wanting to go out at the same time with COVID, but right. I need to go to McFly's. Have you not been to McFly's? No. Oh, dude. Okay. That's right down the street. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and I was talking to my buddy, Tommy <clears throat> Luke, who, who plays there every Tuesday night. And he's like, man. I have not come to see me. <laughs> and there's no excuse. I it's a, done it's, it a, it's a good place. Nice vibe. Uh, okay. they, they get all the, you know, back to the future stuff yeah. on the walls. And you'll, you'll get a laugh out of a lot of the custom stuff that they've had painted on oh, cool. uh, the walls and the bathroom doors and things <laughs> like that. They, they put a lot of work into that place. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I haven't met the owner, but I hear a lot of nice things. Like he's, He's been inside the Fort Worth community for a while, and mm -hmm. he's done other things, and I don't know what, but um, uh, people talk highly of him. So is it's, his it's name good, Casey? That is it, yeah. Casey. I can't I, remember his last name. I can't remember either. Yeah, I mean, I know of him, mm -hmm. and I know he that he pro that he owns that one and opened it. Uh, I just got, I got to get out there. Yeah. I want to check it out. I just, sometimes I don't want to go alone because I don't want to talk to you. Well, hit me up anytime. All right and on. I, you know, I, I told you here pretty soon I'll be moving just down the street from Oh, yeah. So we'll be close. We'll be and I'll, I'll go to with you to McFly's or yeah. Boulevard Brew anytime. Uh, for sure. You've been down. to Boulevard Brew yet? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I yeah. got with Boulevard Brew. I can't miss that one. <laughs> that's uh, really close to you. I know, it's walking distance. Is it really? Well, I could walk. Yeah. I'll walk. Shh, not in this heat. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, drive, I'll drive a few blocks and park and be like, hey. Yeah. I'm my coffee. I'm looking smart. So shout, shout out to them. Um, yeah. They've got a dude in the kitchen. His name is Chef Carey. Okay. And this dude is cooking up little pieces of heaven <sighs> in this little kitchen. That's part of the Purple Lounge slash Boulevard Brew. Mm -hmm. um, his oh. hamburgers are incredible. 
They got it. That sounds like a, he, he's got yeah. a soup of the day. Oh. He he's got all sorts of stuff. Like I I should have a menu in front of me just so I could help promote those guys. But good mm-hmm. stuff, really good stuff. Yeah. And uh, Chef Carrie is a really really nice dude. Cool. So they have a full menu. They got a full menu. They've got beer on tap. Uh, wow. They That's got, been a they while. got the. I think they have the mosaic. They either have the mosaic IPA oh, on cool. tap, or they have the Deep Elm okay. IPA. One of the two. Those are two of my faves. Yeah, I'm an IPA guy too. Yeah, I try not to get too adventurous with those IPAs because oh. every once in a while you'll get bit by a nasty <laughs> one. You're like, oh god, uh-huh. this is terrible. Uh-huh. Well, uh, Johnny, we're an hour into it. Oh, Before wow. we get out, I know, right? That was fast. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> so I I have people sit down with me sometimes, and I've gotten. I've gotten 20 minutes into an interview before, and somebody's like, are we re- going to record yet? Or when, do you, when did you want to start recording? I'm like, oh, no, we... See, I knew you were doing <laughs> I said, we're talking already, so it's probably already on, so oh, let's yeah. just go. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. I know. Well, man, I, it's not yeah. lost on me that you didn't have to do this, so thank you so much for oh, your man. time. thank you. And Johnny... Um, uh, thank you for what you're doing for our music community and just uh, your work with Fort Worth Weekly and your work with the Dubs Observer. Uh, it's people like you that are enriching our community. So thank you so oh, much. Man. Thank, that's and, so uh, nice of you to say. I, I mean it. I mean it. I truly do. And, um, you know, other people are the ones that cued me up on you. Like people oh. told me about you. So oh, you don't have right. to like it, but you're a little bit of a <laughs> Fort Worth celebrity. Uh, I know. <laughs> There's people listening right now going, uh-huh, uh, shaking no. their heads. They tell me that sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, you guys. I mean, you know me, and we're friends, and I mean, thanks for the recognition. I, I mean, thank you. I just I don't like to flaunt it too much. No, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. But it is, it's an important role that you've stepped into uh, unintentionally, and, and oh. you just got to keep doing it, man. Mm-hmm. And your, your, your photographs, your, your art, your pictures, uh, however you want to call it, um, are incredible. You, oh. you, you've got a talent that uh, I, I walked in and I saw this picture that he's got on the wall uh, that you took at the Jazz Lounge down Scat, there yeah. across from, oh, Scat Lounge? It's Scat, but Jazz Lounge. Yeah, yeah uh, right across from uh, Sundance Square. Uh-huh. And uh, he's got the two buildings in frame on the left and right. And it's just, it's such a perfect shot. And uh, oh. grabbed my attention immediately. I was like, did you take that? That's and a of film course photograph. He did. That's a film one? That's a film That's photograph. awesome. If you have a digital copy of that, I'd like to put it on the uh, sure. on, on the episode for the YouTube for version. Sure. Yeah. In fact, anything you want to share with the people that are watching the YouTube version, if you'll email it to me, I'll share that email with you and then I'll, I'll put it in your video and just kind of okay. showcase some of your art. Oh, man, that so would work. Thank any, you. Anytime you'd like to be back on the Fort Worth Roots podcast for any reason, let me know. Oh, my um, Like I said, I'll be right up the street. Yeah. Um, we, could, we can take this anywhere. We could, go, <laughs> yeah. we could go to McFly's and do an episode. Oh, that'd and be they, fun. And they can't stop us either. I just need one, one, <laughs> just one plug in. Yeah. <laughs> cool. They'll be like, can, we, can I get you a drink? Yeah. You know. <laughs> but don't talk too loud when you come by, ma'am, because we're, we're, yeah. we're doing work. This here. is work. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Johnny. Uh, yeah. um, where can everybody find your uh, your art if they want to um, locate you? I know you got IG, and I'll share those links. Is there uh, wh- sure. what, what's the go to? Um, okay, well, if you want to look at my photography, which I actually would like more people to, okay, um, I'm on Instagram at uh, Juan to Know Photography, uh, spelled out as J U A N T O. K N O W photography at the end. So nice. And then my blog page is it's kind of photos too and other stuff I'll put up and uh, that's Juan Tuno. So you've got Juan Tuno and then you've got the photo page Juan Tuno photography. Perfect. So well, yeah. they'll, they'll both be in the show notes. And uh, whenever we get ready to release this episode, if you'd share this with your friends, we'd be oh, honored. Oh man, yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. All right, Johnny, oh, man, thank you it. so much, man. <laughs> yeah, man. All right, this and has been a good one. I I'll, uh, and and we can do more. Okay. So I'll yeah. hit the uh, I'll hit the exit music, and we'll say goodbye to our friends at Fort Worth oh, Roots. Yeah. Thank y'all for listening. Thank you. And we'll see you next week. Uh. <laughs>
Johnny is a good dude. Anyway, go check out his artwork and don't forget about the scavenger hunt. The September 10th event out at Pouring Glory is open to the public. You don't have to play the game if you don't want to, but this is an opportunity for you to go out and see the other awesome podcasters inside the Fort Worth community. So check that out. All the details for the scavenger hunt are in the show notes for you to look at. And if you have any questions, because it can, I think there's so many moving pieces, it could get confusing. So if there's any issues with the game, just email me, media at fortworthroots.com. I'm happy to answer any questions. And, um, you know, like I said, you don't have to play the game, but I'd like you to play the game. And if we get a substantial number of people playing the game, we're going to do this again in the future. And it's not going to be the Fort Worth Roots putting it on. It's going to be people like It's Probably You, The Funky Panther, The Jerry Jonestown Massacre, our friends over at Fort Worth Famous, Osos Golosos. All these people are going to have access to this game. And uh, it'll just be a great way to connect the podcast and continue to do cool stuff for you peoples. So, anyway, I don't know if you've been to an event yet with our local podcast community, but these people are awesome. It's just a room full of good intentions and sincere, awesome people. So, anyway, they're going to be there September 10th at the event, Pouring Glory. you got to come. Go ahead and put it on your schedule. What else? Our sponsors, Roofing Solutions by Darren Houck, is the person that you got to call if you're having any issues with your roof. Now, right now, there's hopefully no hail coming anytime soon, but this high temperatures can pay, play hell on your roof also. So, not a bad time to get Roofing Solutions to come out there and just take a look. You've got silicone caulking around nail heads and vents and things like that and uh, the, the flashing around your chimney. And If that stuff gets sun damaged and starts cracking, that's a spot for a leak to form. It doesn't take hardly any time to fix something like that. Um, but it could cost you a lot of money if you don't address it. Now, that's not the end of the world. You're going to be okay. Don't start hyperventilating. But it's as simple as calling 817-882-6520. Darren can come out there, take a look at the roof, make sure you're good to go. And if you're not, he can put a little bit of extra material on there to protect your most valuable asset. Okie dokie. Our friends over at Hulk Walker Originals, HalkWalker.com. Uh, I keep talking about the pens uh, because they're phenomenal. I, I, I'm a pen guy. you got to have a pen. What are you going to write with? you got to have a pen. Uh, pretty cool stuff. The amount of detail that they put into these wood, uh, wood pencils or pens. Excuse me. I'm going to do a bad job of describing this thing to you. So go to HalkWalker.com and check it out yourself. Um, if you're a podcaster or uh, anybody else that needs stuff for their company, like... Uh, what, you know what you do for work. Anyway, these people would be the ones to go talk to about making some really awesome uh, custom stuff. And uh, it's quality products, so forth and so on. Anyway, these are the people that you want to call. Uh, Hawkwalker.com to see their full inventory. And uh, thank you, Angela, for uh, giving all these podcasters out there at the Pouring Glory event uh, tumblers to take home with them. Uh, these were custom tum- custom tumblers that she made and then just gave them to uh, the podcasters. She didn't have to do that, but she's a very nice human. And uh, I know that they genuinely appreciated it. So, Angela, thank you. And David, thank you for being there as well, sir. And thank you for showing me your awesome pen. Woodpostmetalworks.com. These people can do anything with a plasma cutter. You got ideas, they've got solutions. Um, Something they do a lot of are the signs for businesses. And I'm not just talking about the sign that goes in front of the store. They also do signage for like inside the store also. So awesome, really heavy duty uh, custom pieces that they make for uh, businesses all over the DFW area. So very cool stuff. And uh, I keep going on about their uh, fire pits. They've got custom fire pits. They've got one on their website. It's like uh, United States Marine Corps. All decked out, all custom, and it's just, it's sick. And they've got, you know, they tuned up the color in in Photoshop, I'm sure. But the way the uh, orange light from the flames coming through the fire pit looks on the the picture, it's just cool. Go check it out. That's uh, woodpostmetalworks.com. And thank you to our sponsors. These are the people 
that are going to take Fort Worth roots to the next level. Anyway, thank you all for listening to the show. I don't have anything else to say. I know I always say that, and then I come up with something to tell you. But I think I said all the things. Johnny, again, thank you for being on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Every time you listen to even one episode, it helps our analytics and helps us reach more people. Have you written September 10th down on your calendar yet? Please do that. Do it right now. Don't wait. Put it on your calendar. You don't write it, right? You type it into your Google thing. Anyway, however you calendar, uh, just make sure it gets there. Okay? We're going to do a lot of cool stuff for you. Details for that. uh, I've talked about it enough. But if you have any questions or you want to be a sponsor for the event or you want to sponsor the show, it's media at fortworthroots.com. Thank you all very much. I will see you next week. Bye-bye.